Hey everybody, Brett from Stardew's Gaming here, back with another episode of our Crusader Kings 2, a Game of Thrones mod let's play. So, in the previous episode, I had recognized a small issue with the plan that we had set up. Uh, and it, it is a good plan, it's just not going to benefit us as much as I immediately thought it would. Um, so, if you haven't been following along or if you need a, a quick recap, we had basically been trying to get in with the Lady Paramount and try to find some way to basically take the North from the Starks through Inheritance. And so to that end, we assassinated her husband, but we realized that we didn't really have anybody to marry to her short of Lord Callan um, divorcing his wife and trying to marry her. But then even in that case, we had the issue of the fact that she already has a son and heir. And uh, the possibility of us being able to have a son with her at both of their advanced ages and getting rid of this kid who's in the way was pretty slim. And then, of course, there's upsetting our current wife, who's also a really good character and is super loyal to us, which I feel terrible about doing, so I didn't want to do. Um, it just didn't seem like it was going to work out. However, we did notice that she had a son, Bannon Bolton, who is her heir. He is still very young, and he did not have a... I'm not sure what the word is. He wasn't betrothed to anybody. So, given that the Raven Trees are loaded with daughters, I decided, well, let's take advantage and we'll try to betroth one of our daughters to him matrilineally, so that any child that they have will become a Raven Tree, not a Bolton. And so, this means that when he inherits the North, It'll be held by the Boltons. And then when they have a son, which will be a Raven Tree, the Raven Trees will inherit the North. And from there, I could try to keep it in the hands of the Raven Trees. The thing that I didn't consider is that while my daughter here, Serena, is a Raven Tree, she is not my heir or anywhere near a potential heir. She is so far down the line that there's really nothing I can do about it. So, yeah, a raven tree will take over the north somewhere down the line, but it won't be me controlling them, and that's kind of the issue here. Now, I did sort of work out a way to rectify this, but there's another issue in the way of that, and that is my current heir is Lady Sybil, who has a daughter, Branda, who is basically going to eventually take over as the player character, assuming... Uh, Lady Sybil inherits Lord Callan's claims, she becomes the player character bri briefly, and then her daughter Branda takes over. So, you know, why not just marry Branda to the Bolton kid? Well, the issue here is that Lady Sybil and her husband Jory Snow are off in their own hold, basically. And so... They have say over who Branda marries. I have no control over it. So I actually can't issue a betrothal with her as if she were part of my um, my court because she's not. And that's where the, the big issue is. Um, so part of my plan here in trying to rectify this is we're going to wait until she turns 16 because then she is an adult as far as the game is concerned and she can do whatever she wants so we'll try to bribe her give her gifts or whatever to have her come join our court uh, of her own volition and then we will try to betroth her in place of um, my daughter Serena because then we will eventually become um, you know, King or Lord Paramount of the North as the player character rather than just having somebody in our family on that seat. So I know that was pretty long-winded, but um, that's what's going on here, and that's going to be a really big thing moving forward because we've been trying to take the North piece by piece, and this, this plan here would essentially allow us to take it all at once. And yeah, it'll take some time, but it would still be faster than taking it piecemeal like we've been doing and with a whole lot less bloodshed. So I think it's worth doing, especially because it would be like 
probably one of the most massive coups we've ever pulled off in Crusader Kings. It would be on the level of the way that we snagged Riften back in our old Skyrim uh, playthrough in Elder Kings when we were playing as the Kings of Winterfell. Not Winterfell. Uh, we're trying to become King of Winterfell. When we were the Kings of Windhelm and trying to become High King of Skyrim and we managed to basically fold the Kingdom of Riften and the Kingdom of Windhelm into a single kingdom through something similar to this. And this would be, in my opinion, an even bigger coup than that because we just went from a king to a more powerful king in that situation. Here we're going from um, a semi-powerful lord to basically a more powerful lord or a king depending on um, the situation with the Iron Throne. But I think yeah, I think this is a much bigger move than that one was. Of course, there's still a lot we need to do to make this happen, and so hopefully um, the pieces fall together. But yeah, let's get started now that I've sort of recapped all that. Um, while I'm running the clock here, I'd just like to remind you guys to hit that like button if you're enjoying this playthrough, and you'd like to see more uh, Crusader Kings too. And don't forget to subscribe as well. It's the best way to help the channel grow, and the best way to uh, follow along with our conquest of the North. Our subtle conquest of the north. Um, so she looks like she might faint when she sees strangers. We should probably talk to her about being gregarious. Because we don't want her to be shy. That's a bad trait. Cool, so she's gregarious now. For a seven-year-old, her traits are very, very well balanced. And pretty strong. I mean, she could be, if she were in line to be our heir, she would make a pretty good leader. The thing is... She's so far down the totem pole, it's never going to happen. Literally every one of her sisters is ahead of her. And I think... No, I think if Lady Sybil died, it would bump down to Arana. I don't think it would go to any of her daughters. But there is potential for that. And you don't have any sons, right? Yeah, all daughters. Okay. But yeah, I don't think it would go from her to her. Unless, of course, you know she inherited it and then died. If she dies before Callan does, then I think it's going to fall to Arana, who is actually, I believe, a better character. Eh, no, not really. Maybe slightly better suited to ruling, but still not a great character. Um, she also has a daughter named after her sister. But yeah, so there's a lot of pieces moving around here that we kind of need to get to fall into place. Oh, did Lord Winton finally kick it? Man, he was around forever. Wow. He was incapable for a while. But he was a beast of a character and kind of a thorn in our side for a little while. He never betrayed us, but he opposed us openly on a few occasions. Um, that is to say that, like... There's certain things that he wasn't willing to go along with. There are times where he um, should have backed me and didn't. But he, he never rebelled against me. He never, you know... I don't think he was ever part of any factions against me. He just wasn't really... He was neutral. He was pretty neutral. Um, but yeah, he was an incredible character back when he was young. His... His martial skill was one of the highest that we've seen in this faction so far. So his son, Aethon, Raven Tree is now in charge, and he's not nearly as good a character. But he does like me a little bit more than his father did, so that's good. And his line looks pretty secure. He's got a son and a bunch of daughters. And, it, wow, okay, so he's secured for a couple of lines, or a couple of generations, not lines. So, his heir has an heir. That's good. And they all seem to be fairly... Fairly positive toward me, which is good. More than I can say about their... Uh, their dad. Alright, well... Um, we've got some money. We should probably look at investing it. I think we were going to start working on... Oh, we were saving up for Castletown, too. That's right, so... Once we hit like 350 or something, comfortably above 300, we'll purchase the next upgrade for Castletown. That'll boost our income even further. 
and then I think we'll probably throw the next upgrade at patrol posts. That will boost our garrison size and heavy infantry, and it'll get us closer to the... Uh, it wasn't Modest Estates. Ah, oh, right, I keep forgetting the Starks owe me money. Um, let's call on it. I don't really care if they pay it all back. I would honestly prefer they keep giving me the interest because that's going to add up to a lot more over time. But either way. Yeah, so basically they're going to pay me 19 gold every couple of years until they have enough to give it all back. And I think every time that they pay the interest, the sum goes up. I don't remember. But we were obviously in that position for a long time and managed to get out of it. Finally. It, it took a couple of generations for us to get rid of that loan. But that loan was... Um, I actually don't remember. I think it, it could have been very instrumental, but it ended up not being. I don't remember. I think... Yeah, what happened was we took out a loan in order to, um, in order, in order to build up an army to secede from Carhold, and I think is we won the war, but as soon as we were independent from Carhold, uh, the Lord Paramount, which I think was Benjen at the time, I think it was Benjen Stark, basically just threw us right back under Carhold rule, and so like for all the fighting we did, all the money we spent, it actually didn't get us anywhere. So yeah, I don't think the loan really counted for anything. I think it was actually a pretty big mistake. But live and learn, right? I mean, we've made it this far. So it obviously didn't hurt us that bad. Hmm. Lose one intrigue. Her or me? It must have been me. I don't know. Okay. That's interesting. Do I really care? There was no real effect of that. Uh, she's related to you, pal. That's kind of weird. That's interesting. You used to get piety for saying it's not appropriate. Apparently, that's just kind of assumed now. You're not considered a good person for, for thinking that. You're just a normal person. Which is fair, probably. So, Branda has developed a habit for wild parties. Um... So let's see, 60% chance of charitable, 40 of lustful. Um, honestly, lustful is not that bad. It's actually a, a decent trait to have, especially if you're trying to have more children. Charitable is a very good trait to have. Curfews is going to give me arbitrary and chast. So those are both bad traits. Um, chast, it, it's questionable, but it's going to hurt fertility, which is not a good thing. So... Trading, learning for fertility, probably not the way to go. With Lustful, you gain Intrigue and Fertility, which is obviously going to be preferable for a lot of people. Um, you, you are going to take a Piety hit, but obviously uh, Lord Callan doesn't seem to care too much about Piety. So I think that's a pretty obvious choice for him. So she is Lustful. That's a bit creepy for an 11-year-old, but it did help her... Um, intrigue. Dear Lord Callan of Carhold, I hereby invite you to the wedding of Donner, Raventree, and Daniel Bolton in Weeping Bay. Your presence will be greatly appreciated and I look forward to your attendance. So my niece is marrying... Oh, niece-in-law. I was like, wait, my niece is marrying my nephew. What's happening here? Okay, so she is marrying this kid. There's a lot of Boltons marrying Raven Trees. It's kind of interesting because they have been our our most current enemy, I guess you could say. I'll, I'll go to the wedding. But yeah, we were at war with the Boltons more, re more recently than anybody else. And so I find that a bit funny. Um, I believe we still have a truce with them for two more years. It should be... Uh, actually, I think it's gone. I don't see it. Unless it got bumped. That's entirely possible. Oh, no. His banners just changed is all. So, Chael Bolton is this guy. Oh, Chael Karstark. I thought he was a Bolton. I don't know why. Let's see. So, Lady 
Alice Hornwood of the Dreadfort. That's interesting. But you don't actually hold the Dreadfort. I do. Do you? Okay, so she holds Hornwood. That's strange. So that title got passed around because I, as I recall, he was Lord of the Dreadfort. So yeah, I, she must have usurped it or something. Very interesting. That actually means that I could press a claim on one of these if I had it. Because I only have a truce with him and not her. Um, let's see. So yeah, that's the only truce. But I don't have anything to really declare war against her for. Oh, I guess I have claims on Hornwood, at least through other people. Hmm. That's interesting. So the holdings in the Lordship of the Dreadfort are all de jure vassals of Lord Callan. And so if we won, we become Master Robert's new liege. Oh, I, we looked at this before. Um, it's literally just for one of these. I don't remember which one. But one of these is not part of... Um, Damn it, I don't remember which. One of these is not technically under my rule, despite the fact that it is um, in my in my province. I think it's this one, yeah. Master Robbit. So he is still under the Dreadfort, but everybody else is under Carhold. Or wait, wait a second. Okay, never mind. Got it. So yeah, it would just literally be for that, and it's not worth um, having to wait out a truce just for that. But this does change things pretty considerably, because now... Actually, that does remind me, where the hell is my Justicar? He's in Widow's Watch. Did we already get a claim on Widow's Watch? I honestly don't remember. Let's find out. I have no reason to declare war. Yeah, so we don't have that yet. But, I can declare war on these guys whenever I want now. So that, that does change things. I'm going to move him to here to grab a claim on that. If he doesn't get it within two years, then we'll declare war on Seal Shore and take that back. Um, but if we get it before or sometime during that, then we'll take High Point. And we'll keep working on these. This is all they have left is um, Ethering and Hornwood. And they're not going to stand a chance against us. Widow's Watch is still independent. But obviously less of a concern than this is because this is on our border. Wow, so a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff happening. Um, weddings going on. We did cancel our intrigue, right? Yeah. Okay. Feast time. Hopefully nobody assassinates us. What is my current strength? Oh, look. We became close friends. Close friends with our brother, no less. That's cool. Friends and or dragons. Like, that's, that's a good group to be a part of, right? I don't know where I was going with that. I just think I think it's funny that they get lumped together. Like you got your your relatives, your distant relatives, and then you got your friends and or dragons. Um, the feast is winding down. Um, oh, the the bedding. Okay. It would be less weird if that kid looked like an adult going into his marriage than you know actually being a child. Janos, you're leaving me. Wait, you can't leave? You're you're matrilineally married to someone in my family. Really? 
What if I gave you a gift? Because I don't really want to have to replace him. He's pretty good. Um, invite to court. Okay, he'll rejoin. Good. Whew. That could have been a problem. We gain a little bit of prestige just for showing up. It's always nice. Honestly, the better thing there is that we became friends with our, our brother because that makes him a lot more loyal than he would otherwise be. Oh, you were my Jesta card too, dude. Like, you totally just ruined that. Um, fabricate claims, so that means that whole time he wasn't working on this. Go ahead and get rid of these. Giving him land would, you know, force him to stay around, which is probably what I should do. The thing is, I don't know if I can give him land. No, I can't. I just don't have any land that I want to give him. If we take something soon, obviously, I'll, I'll throw it to him. Especially given that uh, the matrilineal marriage is to somebody of our family, so his children will all be raven trees, which is ideal. Uh, they might not have children, though, if he's already 40. How old is she? Oh, she's only 18. Never mind. That's They've got plenty of time. Again, we, we've been discussing this in the last few episodes, but um, I don't believe there's any hard cap on men having children, but women, I think, cannot have children after 45. At least as far as the game code is concerned. Obviously, in real life, that is probably not true. But yeah, in, in the game, I don't think men are capped. Women, however, are. So, let's see. We wanted Castletown. And that leaves us with 88 gold, which should be enough to kind of pad us out in case uh, anything happens. Especially the rate that we're making money, like 14 per month, is pretty damn good. Let's see. Lord Callan, whilst I am under no obligation to give recompense for levies raised, I hereby grant those vassals of mine dedicated to the North's War compensation in gold. How about you pay back the loan, lady? You got enough to throw money at everyone. How about you just pay me back instead? I'm sure they'll understand. Uh, let's see. So yeah, there's Serena. She is fifth on the list. And then Branda is just beyond her. Of course, Branda would be uh, Lady Sybil's primary heir. She's looking a bit weird. That red mark on her face is throwing me a bit. We have a child lacking a guardian. Um... Damon Raventree, the son of Spymaster Miles and Arana. Miles Drinkwater. That's That could be the most generic name ever. His last name, anyways, because everybody drinks water. Like, Miles Person, Miles Human Being, like that's... Like, what do you even... I don't know. How does that distinguish you from anybody else? Alright, so Damon. Uh, do I have another ward? I do have two wards, Branda and Serena, obviously. So, I think we'll let, we'll let, we'll, we'll probably have his father educate him. He's done a pretty good job thus far. So, you're going to educate your, uh, your son here. Go for it. And I'm actually going to throw you a little gift because I don't like that your opinion of me is a bit low. Okay. Oh. he He's not fond of me because he is zealous and worships the seven, whereas I worship the old gods. And I'm not the most pious person. <laughs> so they, they might not disagree over all that. But otherwise, he's been a fantastic character for us, and I'd like to keep him happy and around and loyal so I'll give him some money and he'll bring up his own son because he did a pretty good job with I can't remember who else he was um, educating but he did a good job with it so I, I'm sure he'll do just fine here it's his son too I mean obviously Damon is not gonna be playing a huge part for us Jano seeks to kill Lord Florian of Breakstone Hill Breakstone Hill. I have no idea where that is. Hmm. I, I'm kind of interested because if I, if I could benefit from that, I might be 
interested in looking the other way, but, um... Ah. Interesting, okay. That is interesting. I wonder what he's thinking, because he would benefit from that if I inherited this, which I am the heir, so if he dies, I inherit that. Um, if he succeeds, then I have a province to hand out to somebody, and I was just saying if I had a province to hand out to somebody, guess who would be getting it? So that's kind of funny that that happened, but you know what? I'm all for that, because frankly, this guy has no children to speak of. He is a good character, but he's not actively doing anything for me. He's 60, so he's not going to be around that much longer anyways. And really, he's not serving any other purpose for us. So if, if you want to try it, go for it. I'm not going to step in, but I'm not going to help you either. I might help you. <laughs> let's, let's take a look and see. Um, oh, I, I should probably go to him and offer to back his plot. Um, I could raise him to nobility. That's an option. I don't see an option to back his plot, though I can end it. I can plot against him. I can insult him. Um, raise to nobility. So I have to give him 40 gold. And he'll gain some prestige. You know what? There's no point. There's no point in doing it because he's matrilineal he's matrilineally married, so any house that he establishes will end with him anyways. And he might get one automatically when I give him land, so there's yeah, I don't think there's a point to that. Um, we are actually out of time though, so I'm gonna break off the episode here. But not a lot has actually happened, although there's a lot of stuff working in the background, like an incredible amount of stuff going on. Just not, um, you know, big wars or land grabs or anything like that. But there's there's gears turning, and if they all align properly, we could really do something big here. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Crusader Kings 2 with you, and I look forward to seeing you back here for the next episode.